and this morning I'm going to be hearing Ava read. So Ava, you're going to stay facing the table. The rest of you are going to turn your chairs and take your book and read quietly to yourself while I hear Ava read. Okay, so go ahead. You may start on page one. Ava, I'd like you to open page nine, please. Remember, if you get stuck on anyone, you know what your strategies are for figuring out the words. And if you can't do that, then you can always ask for the help. Okay? All right, whenever you're ready, Ava. Some grass and trees don't de depend on animals for pollination. The wind does the job instead. The wind blows pollen from one plant to another. Plants are pollinated by the wind, are usually brown or green. They don't need color to attract bees or butterflies, but most fruit growing plants have bright colors petals. The petals get it, the flower pollinated, and that is the first step of getting fruit. All right, Ava, let's take a look at what you did. As you were reading, I noticed right away in this first sentence, you said, some grass and trees don't depend on animals for pollination. Can you take another look at that word? Can you read it for me? Grasses. Grasses. Make sure that we're always attending to, to the end of words as well. All right. And the other thing that I noticed was that um, as you're reading, that you are adding punctuation at the ends of lines where it doesn't exist. And so what we're going to make your goal for next time is that you're reading for that punctuation um, so that it sounds more um, smooth when you're reading. I know this is a new level, so you're getting used to more words on the page and a little bit more difficult words. You did a very nice job. Um, you even went back and did some self-correcting, which tells me you're paying attention to what you're reading. So for right now, we're going to make that reading for punctuation your goal. So the next time I hear you read, um, I'm going to look for that. And I'm also going to be looking to make sure that you are reading the words clear through to the end, okay? All right, nice job, sweetie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you would turn back to the table. And you can close your books for right now. Keep them right up on top. So yesterday we had we worked with this book from flower to fruit and we talked about a learning goal. We talked about how we can show and use nonfiction text features to find important facts. That was our target for yesterday and we talked about how you could earn a four, a three. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for you to score at a three or higher and that if you are scoring in the tour one, we don't have anyone in here who's at a zero, but if you're scoring in a two and one, that is something we need to work on. So what I wanna do before we go on to our next target with this book, because we're gonna use this book for another day, is I'd like to do a little checkup on how you're doing with the text features. So, pencils down. What I'm gonna do is ask each of you to find a specific text feature in the book, and then tell me a little bit about how that text feature works or what it is, okay? Tutor, I'd like you to find a caption. Ava, I'd like you to find the glossary. I'd like you to find a close-up picture. I would like you to find a bold word. And I would like you to find a diagram. Okay. Go ahead and go right to it. When you get to, um, actually, Zoe, I'm going to take that back. I'd like you to find a label. Find a label. When you get to the text feature that I asked you to find, a caption, a glossary, a close-up, a bold word, and a label, I'd like you to put your finger on those items. So put your finger. Okay, Tutor, I'm looking for a caption. That would be a label. Can you find a caption for me? Okay. All right, Tutor, you found a caption. Can you tell me what the job of a caption is? The job of a caption <coughs> is to explain more about the picture. Very nicely done. Thank you. Ava, can you tell me what a glossary is for? A glossary is a little dictionary that tells you, and it it tells you what the word means, and it tells you an ABC order. Oh, very nice that you added the ABC order. Can you tell me why these particular words are in this glossary? Where will we find them? We'll find them in bold words. 
in the text. All right, very nice. All right, Scarlett, can you tell me what the job of a label is? The job of a label is to show you a little part. To, it tells you a part of a picture. A picture or a diagram. In this case, it's of a picture. Very nicely done. You have found a bold word for me. Can you tell me why the author uses bold words? Um, the author uses bold words because... Okay, want to call on a friend to help you out with that one? Who can help her out? Why would an author use a bold word? What is, what is the reason he puts a words in bold? Or she? Eight. Pick a friend. Because you'll find it in the glossary. That's one reason. What's another reason why an author uses bold words? Can you pick someone else to give an, a little more information? It's an important word in the book. It's an important word in the book. He wants us to, re he or she wants us to really pay attention to that word. All right, you found a label, and I had asked her to find a label. So I'm gonna, you, um, I'm gonna ask you to explain. This is a little bit more of a close-up. Can you tell me what this close-up does for us? It's a picture. In the picture, it shows a bee almost landing on a flower, and then mm -hmm. it gives us a closer picture of. And why do you think the author used that um, text feature of a close-up to help us with that picture? So we could see the nectar. Oh, so, he could, so we could focus in on that nectar. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, you did a very good job of explaining what an auth author uses text features for. It's not just to make the book look better or to make it more interesting. It's to help us better understand what we read. And I can tell we still need to work on it a little bit. Some of us are, are in different places but we'll come back to that with another book. So today we are going to talk about our new learning goal, okay? This book has a lot of things that we can learn from it. So we're gonna look at our new learning goal, which is, and I'm gonna read the whole thing and then I'm gonna talk about how it applies to our book. I can describe the connection between events in history, scientific ideas, or procedures in text. Hmm, that's a lot of words, isn't it? But I wanna ask you something. Events in history. Was this a book that gave us events in history? No. No. no, this was, we didn't learn about famous people or famous events, so we're not going to be looking at history. Now, did this book teach us how to grow a fruit from a flower? Did it show us how we could plant it and take care of it and grow it? Is that what this book was trying to show us? Yes. Ava thinks a little bit. Other ones are saying no. Did, did it say, if you want to grow an apple tree, this is what you need to do, and then give us steps to do that, Ava? Yes. It did. Can you show me where it did that in the book? Ah, well, that's very important. And you've actually hit on what we're gonna be talking about today. And what the author is doing here, he's not teaching us how to do it, he's showing us how it happens. Okay, so we're gonna clear up that little bit of a misconception for you in a little while, okay? So this book is talking about scientific ideas. What's the scientific idea that this book is describing? We talked about this a little bit yesterday in the introduction. If it's going from flower to fruit, what is that teaching us about? Tudor. The sequence. The sequence. What do we call that when there's a sequence with living things? Zoe. A cycle. A cycle, a life cycle. So this is going to be um, scientific ideas that we're going to be looking at. Now, I want you to look at what our scale is. A four would be that I can explain connections and apply them to new texts or situations. And you're going to get an opportunity to do that today. A three means that I can describe the connection between events in history, scientific ideas, which you're going to be able to show me that. But like I said, you're going to be able to send that to a four if you can. Then if you're operating at a two, I can identify connections between events in history so you can tell me about them but not necessarily explain, or you can show them to me, but you can't necessarily explain how it's happening. And then with one, you need a little bit of help from me or another adult to be able to do the work. So we're gonna see how you do with that learning goal today. And then when we come back tomorrow, I'm gonna let you tell me where you think you are, okay? But I'm gonna give you a chance to do the work first. So what I need everyone to do is to go ahead and turn to that picture where Ava is on page 14 and 15, or those pictures on page 14 and 15. Okay. How do we know this is a sequence? What are, what are some clues that you see in the text that let us know that this is a sequence like Tudor said? Ava. Because it's 
numbered in order. If numbered in order, that was the first clue for me. And then what other information do you get that lets you know that this is something that happens in a specific order? Um, it shows the steps. Oh, all right, so you see yeah, the yeah. steps of it growing? Is yes. that what you're telling me in the pictures? Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but before we do, I want to set your books up so that you can do the response when you go back to your seat. So if you could take and put your journals on top of the books and turn them sideways so that the holes in the spiral are up. There we go. Fold your book, and I have mine. I'd like you to fold your book so that the page goes up and creates a center line. Would you do that for me, please? All the way up to the spiral, there you go. That'll give you plenty of room. Fold it back down. This one, honey, we'll get there. Fold that up for me. Now take a pencil and draw a line through that center line that you just created by folding. It's gonna help you set your paper up. All right, so sequencing is not something that's new to us. We've used um, sequencing with stories and we've used sequencing with other um, books that we've read. So today you're going to show me, this is your chance to show what you know, all right, that you understand how to explain the steps in a scientific procedure, okay? So what I've done is I took the pictures that were in this book and I created a diagram just like this author did and I put the pictures in the order in which they happen. What happens if we take things out of order? Just like in a story, what happens to the, to the process? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, that's right. Well, it's the same thing in a scientific um, procedure. If we took this step out, these other things might not happen um, or we would get different results. So we wanna make sure that we put them in the right order. So Mrs. Maroon put the pictures of growing that apple from the point of flower to fruit and I put them in order like the author did and I numbered them, okay? Just like what's in the book. And then underneath, I explained. I'm showing what I know from what I read in my own words. I put, in spring, the apple tree is covered in flowers called blossoms. Does that explain what we see in this picture? Yes. It does. So today, what you're going to do so that you can show me that you understand the steps in a scientific process, which we've done this before, you are going to take a different fruit from flower to fruit. Now, I have some pictures here for you, and they're not in order. I didn't make it that easy. I want you to cut these out, and you're going to put them in order just the way I did in my book, and I'm gonna put this underneath the document camera so you'll be able to look at it. Make sure that you indicate the order, just like the author did in his book, and then underneath, being able to show me that four, that you are applying this to a new situation, a different plant going from flower to fruit. I want you underneath to explain the process based on what you read in this book about what happens with an apple on an apple tree. I want you to explain what happens with the oranges in the tree or in the pictures here, okay? All right. So. Are there any questions about what you're going to go do for me today with this sequencing and showing me that you understand the steps in a scientific process? Any questions about what you're gonna go do? All right, so when you get back to your seat, before